thanks everybody. And um, uh, let me just add my own um, welcome. It's great to see everybody here, some uh, familiar faces from year after year after year, and some new faces. So that's just terrific. Um, my contribution is to just uh, take a few moments to give you a quick snapshot of the things that we're focusing on in our work of promoting the long-term interests of consumers in the energy sector. And of course, as you all know, there's an awful lot going on. So I'm just going to uh, really hit the high notes and uh, tell you about the direction of our thinking, really. Um, so the first, let me start with ESB. There's a couple of, that's the Energy Security Board. Uh, there's a couple of uh, really important streams of work going on there. One is um, around um, what they call distributed energy resource integration, and that's a series of uh, workshops uh, days this week. Um, we're starting to actually think that um, other people's distributed energy resources might in fact be our appliances. Uh, so panels, batteries, hot water, air conditioners, pool pumps and over time electric vehicles. Um, so the emphasis needs to shift really on how to deliver maximum value for consumers for their appliances, which will become part of the energy system, and how we in fact optimise the system overall. Um, second major piece of work at the Energy Security Board, just getting going really, is the post-2025 market design task. Now this is an important task and possibly seems impossibly long, um, but if you think that we've used our current market design with a few tweaks here and there, of course, for about 20 years, then what we're talking about is a design that will carry us into the future. We're thinking increasingly that we actually have to start that piece of work by looking quite a long way into the future and working backwards from that rather than incrementally tweaking things from the current position. We think the danger of that is that it's going to make for a series of discussions which really go to protecting my current position uh, rather than focusing on the possibilities. Um, let me turn quickly to AEMO. A um, couple of really important things also to just highlight this afternoon. Um, the first one is the integrated system plan version number two. We're really pleased to see that there are some um, much longer term scenarios being included in that work. Um, there's much improved stakeholder engagement um, in that work now. And there's some extremely interesting resources being provided uh, by AEMO um, through their insights papers, um, which you can uh, get on their website. The other thing about AEMO is um, that they've published for the first time a corporate plan. It's their corporate plan 2023. Uh, and um, they also publish an extremely interesting document every quarter called the um, Quarterly Energy Dynamics Report. And um, I often give people reading homework at these seminars. These two documents are absolutely must read. The um, uh, corporate plan um, very early on, in fact, dare I say, this is, this is the kind of CEO I am. In paragraph one of the executive summary, there is a clear shout out uh, to the role that AEMO plays in achieving the uh, national electricity, gas and energy retail objectives, which of course go to promoting the long-term interests of consumers. And we were absolutely delighted to see that shout out in AEMO's corporate plan. Um, the quarterly energy dynamics report, um, you've got to learn how to read that report, but it's absolutely worth the investment of time. Anything that you want to know about why we're getting the results we're getting in the energy sector in terms of price outcomes, security and reliability is covered in quite a straightforward way in that report. As I say, it's, it's really must-read stuff and it comes out every quarter. On to the AEMC, um, we're also seeing some extremely interesting developments in focus at the AEMC. Um, I'm going to summarise this very 
briefly by saying now my reading of the AEMC is that demand really matters. Um, so there's discussion about two-sided markets emerging. There's discussion about managing, and to use that terrible word, monetizing demand, but this time for consumer benefit, for individual consumers and for consumers overall. The AEMC is also getting into the publishing business, um, and they've published a particularly interesting paper um, on applying the energy market objectives. And again, they go through how they think about the long-term interests of consumers in quite an amount of detail. Um, they, talk, uh, they make the point that it's consumers overall rather than particular groups of consumers that count, um, that it's energy services that count rather than assets. It's about how energy is used rather than what it is or how it's delivered. Um, and that for them, long term takes account of, they use the term dynamic efficiency, we would use the term innovation. Um, so it's a particularly important document um, from our point of view. And um, one of the things that I'd like to call out from that document um, is the comment from the Commission on how they deal with matters of risk. Um, and to quote the document, he said, the Commission considers whether its decisions are robust to impacts on the variables, price, quality, safety, reliability and security of supply, um, if these matters are impacted by mitigation or adaptation risk that manifests due to the issue of climate change. So finally, we're starting to see the integration that is so important to all of us in this room of climate risk and energy policy. Over at the AER, similarly, a range of uh, work going on. We've been particularly interested in the um, AER work on network revenue determinations, um, particularly at the moment uh, we're focusing on New South Wales because those decisions have landed what we're seeing because of the way those decisions have landed is that no, those networks have moved their focus from a focus on regulation to a focus on innovation. And there's much more preparedness now to work with consumers rather than doing things to consumers or for consumers, but working with consumers on innovation. Um, there's a lot of work going on on transmission projects and again we're seeing terrific uh, developments in terms of consumers at the table uh, working with uh, Transgrid in this case on getting better outcomes for very, very long term projects. When we build a transmission network we're building something that we're all going to enjoy looking at and using for 40 or 50 years. Um, so that work of working together on those projects is deeply significant. There's an increased retail focus at the AER, which we're very pleased to see. And of course, there's plenty of work going on on system reliability and security monitoring and enforcement responsibilities. Again, the AER has just published their corporate plan. Um, and they uh, say in that corporate plan that their task is to make all Australian energy consumers better off now and at the in the future. We place consumers at the heart of our work to deliver a secure, reliable and affordable energy future for Australia in the face of significant technological, behavioural and systemic change. So we see all these as important markers of regulators and policy bodies really engaging in what it means to get better outcomes for consumers from this sector. Um, moving out of Australia just for a moment, um, I was fortunate enough to um, have a bit of a holiday um, in the middle of the year in the UK and I was really struck by the different nature of discussions in the energy sector in the UK now that they have decided to shoot for net zero emissions by 2050. And the change in the discussions is this. It's catalyzing a focus on the future where everybody is thinking about what they need to do to play a role in achieving that outcome. 
Um, so there's very significant development of what I would call an innovation ecosystem in energy uh, in the UK, which we will be looking at and uh, trying to figure out how we can get that sort of support here. Um, we're doing our own research um, into what consumers expect in the future from the energy sector, and that will give us new insights into their long-term interests. We're working to be ready for a discussion with the whole sector in February next year on the findings and the implications for energy sector decision-making. We're also doing quite a bit of work directly with consumers um, our Power Shift program, um, we launched last year um, a body of work in, uh, uh, which was focusing on housing quality. We've been really pleased to see the response from ministers on that work, um, and I know that's uh, an area of uh, interest for some people that we'll be hearing from later this afternoon, so no more from me on that. Um, we'll be uh, doubling down, if you like, in the next 12 months on our focus on energy management. Um, by consumers and enabling them to do that. Um, we've also been very pleased with the new energy technology consumer code. Um, that is with the ACCC in the final stages of authorisation. It's quite a different vehicle for consumer protection in the energy sector. Um, it places a lot of responsibility on industry uh, to take responsibility for outcomes. And we're very enthusiastic, but we're, we'll be in watch and see mode for the next few years. Um, we're hoping that that really works because that then provides us with a vehicle for faster and more flexible uh, avenues to consumer protection where needed. And lastly, let me talk about the Energy Charter. Uh, that's again another uh, innovative, innovative approach where we've been working with industry uh, to get industry to step up, to move away from adversarial games, um, to move away from a compliance focus to a, a focus on being part of a change effort, um, being led by leaders across the whole sector, um, generation, transmission, distribution and retail, with everybody working together with a shared aim of better for consumers. And this work is being led by the CEOs of these companies and it's that that gives us confidence um, that there's a great deal of commitment and seriousness about this work. Um, success um, is going to come in various different forms. Um, but when I was asked about this yesterday, I said, we ask consumers in our energy sentiment survey every six months whole range of questions, but there are three when I'm looking over time to whether the energy charter is successful. So the first question that I'll be looking at is the question, do you have confidence in this market? And I'll be really hoping that the numbers will be up from households with 31% having confidence and small business with 42% having confidence at the moment. We ask people whether they think they're getting value for money from this sector. And again, we'll be looking um, for those numbers to go up from 47% seeing value for money for electricity and 60% seeing value for money for gas. And the third question I'll be looking at is, are you confident in managing your energy costs? And I'm hoping that the numbers will be up from households round about 60% and small businesses at 56%. So that's the quick overview of all the things that we're trying to wrestle to the ground in all the work that we're doing um, and doing much of it with, uh, with you in this room in various different guises and projects and relationships through our grants program and through our advocacy and comms work and through our research and through our economics uh, insights. So let me stop talking and now pass the baton to Chris Alexander. Chris is our Director of Advocacy and Communications and because he's got very advanced skills in communications, we've given him the task of bringing to you this afternoon five 
absolutely fascinating projects that we have funded um, through the year, which look at energy matters from a range of different perspectives and a range of different consumer groups. So with that, I will pass to Chris. Thank you.